I want to welcome you to virtual community this morning. And we have with us today, Carla Young, and I'm going to give you her mini resume because it's pretty impressive. Um, she is the owner of Young at Art. She teaches for Lancaster City Schools in the junior high, which has got to be crazy. Um, 20 plus years of teaching experience, holds her BFA and MA in our education. And above all of that, she's a, an amazing human who's doing really great things. So we're really happy to have her today. So Carla, I'm gonna turn it over to you, ma'am. Well, thank you so much. It is great to be here. I appreciate the invitation and uh, um, just the opportunity to share a little bit with you. So Rachel, can I go ahead and share my screen right now? And- um, Yep, go right ahead. Okay. Okay, we practiced this, there it is. <laughs> There we go. Not quite as painful as yesterday. All right. So as Rachel said, my name is Carla and I am first and foremost a mother of two kids. They are now 17 and 19 years old, um, which I can't believe because I think I first met Rachel when our kids were maybe in Tuesday school together. So yeah, just in a way it seems like yesterday and in a way it just seems like a lifetime ago. So weird how that, how that happens. Um, and then as kind of a side business that is just growing and growing, I started teaching private art lessons out of my home a couple years ago. Um, I used, when I first graduated from college, I got a teaching job in Gehanna and I taught there for seven years, but then I got married, had my first child and decided um, I wanted to see if I could do private art lessons to keep some income coming in and then be a stay-at-home mom by day. And so that's when I started these private art lessons. Uh, I eventually ended up, my kids got older, I went back into teaching full-time. Um, and then life changes and things happen and I was looking for some ways to make some extra money and make some ends meet. Uh, and I decided, hey, why don't I just see if maybe I can revive the private art lesson idea and see if any kids would be interested uh, coming to my home and, and doing some, some drawing and some painting. And I know in this day and age, like I personally would have trouble just sending my kids to a stranger's house. Um, so I wasn't sure how well received this idea would be to just have kids come into the house. Um, it is small groups, which I think makes people a little more comfortable. Parents are welcome to stay. And a lot of it has been word of mouth, um, kids that I know their parents or they're a friend of a friend. And so I think that helps being a teacher in the community, I think helps. Um, and so right now I have, um, I just yesterday got my last student enrolled. So I teach five classes in person um, with six kids each. And I just signed up my 30th student last night. So um, that was my last spot. And then now I've started some virtual classes, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So as Rachel said uh, a little bit about me and uh, my art lessons, these are some of my students there. Um, it is, like I said, small group instruction. I start them at age seven, just because it's an hour long, an hour long class. They need to kind of have a, a little bit of an attention span to an attention to detail. So I find that age seven is a pretty decent age to start. Uh, and then I, I go all the way up through um, I have occasionally offered some adult classes, um, but right now I'm, I'm busy with just the kids. This is the space that I have in my home. Um, nice, I, I was blessed to have a nice space and the kids come in and uh, with social distancing, I brought in another table to kind of help them spread out a little bit. I do require masks. Uh, we sanitize hands at the beginning of each class um, so anyway, this is my space. These are some, I've been collecting calendars. These calendars are older than most of the kids who come. They're just great to have full color photos that the kids can use as a reference photo. I've got tons of how to draw books. There's this great little storage closet that was already in my house. I've got that filled with my supplies. Um, and so this is a class in session. group. 
I group them ages 7 to 11, and then the older classes are 12 to 17. Um, and as you can see, I give the kids lots of freedom in choosing what they want to draw. I have found that if they come and I say, okay, tonight everybody's going to draw a horse, it's too much like school. And one reason they like to come is because they kind of have the freedom to be creative in their own way. So I am there to help them. You know, this little girl wanted to paint a rainbow. Um, and so, you know, I help her with painting the rainbow, uh, doing different blending techniques. You know, somebody else was found a picture on the iPad and was trying to paint that. Uh, so they, they do have some freedom. It's very individualized. I kind of meet them where they're at and then try to challenge them on an individual level. These are just some pictures that I've taken of the kids work. You can see here's the calendar page I mentioned, the little girl doing the hummingbird and the flowers. This one is kind of special because the little girl that drew this, she is, I believe she's 12. This is her mom. And then this was her grandpa. And this was her mom's mom and dad's wedding day. And the mom is dancing of course with her father and he has recently passed away. So for her mom's birthday, she said this was her mom's favorite photo of her and her dad, and she wanted to draw it. And then her dad helped her frame it and they gave it to the girl's mom for her birthday. So she told me her mom cried. Actually, her mom even texted me. She's like, I can't believe you helped her with that. You know, and she was, and the little girl had her ideas. She wanted the whole thing to be in black and white, but she said her grandpa's favorite color was orange and she wanted his tie to be the only thing in color. So kind of sweet. Um, this was a little seven-year-old. She had just started, and this was her interpretation of that field of flowers. So I thought that was super cute. And then um, this little gal, she wanted to draw her dog, so she brought that picture in on her phone. So every now and then I try to kind of give them some foundation skills. And, you know, this class, they were moaning and groaning, but I started them off with a shading worksheet. We talked about the difference, different positions of shadows and how it can, you know, make that sphere look like it's floating. We talked about highlights, shadows. So these are some of the, some of the projects or some of the sketches that they did. Just some kids at work. So again, as you can see, a lot of them, they'll find an inspiration piece and work from that. Some of them work from their imagination. This little guy just turned seven. So I thought that was pretty adorable for that age. And so right now I'm focusing on trying to get some interest in my online classes. Uh, I have a seven to 11 age group uh, at nine and then at 10, I have a 12 to 16. And then we're doing these classes um, over Zoom, just like what we're doing here. So they're live and interactive and small group. They're the same cost. Um, plus I tell the parent, you know, you're saving the hassle of driving back and forth, but um, you are, you know, you have to buy some basic supplies. So that's kind of the trade-off. I like to, this is a lot more guided. Um, for this particular example, we talked about the artist Kandinsky and this is one of his paintings. And then I talked them through, we practiced mixing primary colors and kind of we made our own Kandinsky inspired piece. Um, this here in the upper right corner is a painting by Alma Thomas. She's, um, one of the most famous African-American artists. And she uh, even had pictures, paintings chosen to be hung in the White House when the Obamas were there. Uh, and so we talk about her work and her style of painting with these dashes. And then the kids uh, made an Alma Thomas inspired piece and we did theirs more as a color wheel. So they got a little bit of color theory in there too. Um, this was a painting up here in the upper left Wayne Tebow, um, he's still alive actually. He just celebrated his 100th birthday. Um, he is famous for painting like a lot of sweets. So cupcakes and cakes and ice cream. And so I talked to the kids through how to draw 
uh, an ice cream cone, how to add shading and shadows. And uh, this little guy right here actually went, I've known his mom since elementary school. Um, I went to Medill in Lancaster back in the day. And so she texted me her son's picture. He was pretty proud of his ice cream. Um, and I think he's 11. So um, this was an awesome opportunity that I was given with the Lancaster Festival. They uh, had asked me if I'd be interested last summer in teaching some classes in person at the Decorative Arts Center the week of the festival. And I thought that sounded amazing and I agreed to do that. Well, then COVID happened. So uh, they decided to have the, the art lessons recorded and broadcasted so that people could follow along and still do some art, but yet do it in the safety of their home. So we came up with an art around the world um, kind of a theme. And I said, since so many people are stuck at home over the summer and changing travel plans or deleting travel plans completely, we had projects from different parts of the world. So it was kind of a grab your passport and we're still gonna take a trip, but we're gonna do it through art. So it was very well received. And they asked if I would do another week of, of lessons, recorded lessons for Christmas for winter. Uh, and so I just did that in December. Um, those went pretty well too. I think I'm gonna do another week here in the spring for Easter. Um, that was one of the pictures. Uh, I had no idea the first time what to expect in this studio with bright lights and I was a little, a little nervous, but uh, I, I feel like I got more comfortable as the sessions went on. The second week, um, the winter projects, I feel like went a lot better than, than the first, <laughs> just because I kind of knew what to expect. So does anybody have any questions or anything for me before I just keep blabbering? No? Um, Rachel uh, asked me to include this as well. I feel kind of funny. This, uh, the Fairfield County Heritage Association, they are um, the association that helps keep our museums like the Georgian and the Sherman House uh, publicized and, and up and running. They have a Christmas card every year um, and so they asked me to do the design this year. And since this year was the 130th birthday or anniversary of our fountain downtown, that was the subject that they wanted for their card. So they were, the lady said that normally it's kind of wide open, but they were very specific in what they wanted. And <laughs> I've lived in Lancaster my whole life and never realized quite how much detail is on that fountain until I, I tried to draw it. So you've got these little babies and the, uh, straddling the fish and, um, you know, and then trying to, I took pictures in the summer of the fountain and then I tried to make it look like it was done in the winter. So it, it was a challenge because I didn't have any pictures of it in the winter. I looked online, I, I talked to some people and and so I kind of had to wing it, but uh, I do believe their cards sold out. So I think it was, a lot of people liked the little cardinals, kind of a little symbol nod to our state bird. Uh, and then every year, um, of course, except for COVID, uh, we didn't do this, but um, the, every year we have a, an art show, all of the Lancaster City Schools um, art teachers, both past and retired. Uh, have an exhibit in the third floor of our Fairfield County Library. So downtown in the library on the third floor, we'll do a reception and each artist will hang some of their, their pieces that they've done throughout that year. So I'm typically an all pencil kind of girl. I love graphite and drawing realistically and these are uh, kind of reflecting those. And then I branched out uh, last year and experimented some with colored pencil that was kind of fun. You, you color with colored pencil and then <clears throat> I'll tell you my secret. You actually dip the end of a Q-tip in baby oil, Johnson & Johnson baby oil, and you can blend your colors. It makes the colors more vibrant. They blend easier. It makes it kind of like paint. So it's kind of a fun trick. This was over here as a collage. Uh, and so then I just wanted to end with a quote about children being naturally creative and it's our job to give them the freedom, materials and space to let their creativity blossom to its full potential. 
So you anybody shouldn't have any? Be, you shouldn't feel weird about putting your artwork out there. You do a great job. You should Thank be proud. You. Does anybody Thanks. have any questions for Carla? Pam, you're our art girl. You got nothing? Oh, that was awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. Good stuff. I like that um, <clears throat> it's another option in our community uh, to gain knowledge and get, you know, for art. We have, we say we have a lot, but it's been tricky the last year. So it's nice to see that you're, you're continuing to do what you do. <laughs> I'm glad people are still willing to let their kids come in, come into my home for an hour a week. And um, it, it's just been a blessing. It really has. And, and the other opportunities that have fallen in place this year uh, in such a crazy year have been pretty neat to see. So. Um, I really enjoyed listening to you and I had no idea that was in Lancaster. Um, I did not see, I saw a price on something that you had up there, but is there a website that would show prices for private classes and group classes or any of the, all, all of the above that you talked about? I have a Facebook page. I don't have a website. I guess I'm not techie enough for that, but I do have a Facebook page and it's just called Young at Art. And I hold my lessons on a monthly basis. So once a child has a spot, it is theirs for as long as they want to come. So I will have a lot of kids that just want something to try. Um, I did some gift certificates at Christmas and kids came, you know, for have come for the month of January as a, you know, as, as part of their Christmas gift. Um, some kids have been coming the entire two years since I started, you know, and I've kind of watched them grow and mature and watch their work and their skills progress. So that's kind of neat. Um, so it's $50 a month. So it's basically $12.50 a class. So it's $50 a month. They pay it the first class of each month. Um, you know, I had somebody, uh, I think it was last week that wanted to start. And I said, well, just, just pay $12.50 for the last class of January and see, see if it's something that you like. And if it is, then you can continue in, in February and then pay the full price in February. So, yeah. Okay, I think you're, you sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I think your space is awesome that you have for them to come into. And I've heard about you the last couple of years cause I work for the board, but um, it's just great to actually finally like see who you are. And like, I feel more comfortable, like I would be able to send my daughter and things like that. Um, I, I just realized I have balloons that she drew on and our faces last <laughs> night, but so that was an accident, but, um, she's not the most creative yet, but she's trying, <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, I just think it's really cool. And now I know I have all these beautiful calendars and I'm always like, what do I do with them? So maybe if you ever want some more, <laughs> okay, I would love that. Yes. Yeah. There's, they're so fun. And then you're like, what do I do with them? But um, so no, I just, I appreciate you. And, and I like that you kind of give the information about the artists as well. I mean, I feel like I probably learned that stuff in school, but at the time it, it wasn't as meaningful to me, but I really like that you kind of showed that these are the different types of art you can do based on different artists and stuff. So I really like that history and, and information as well that you give. Well, thank you. I try to stress <laughs> on a regular basis so many of the kids, at least, you know, in my public school teaching job, it's middle school. And this is just such a, an age of transition and they're trying to discover who they are. And there's some insecurities there as they're, as they're changing and figuring things out. And so many kids will come in and tell me right off the bat, like, I stink at art because I can't draw. You know, well, I can't draw, I, you know, I, and so I try to just squash that line of thinking right off because there are so many different forms of art. You know, I just, I just was talking to a class this morning about this artist that makes sculptures out of chewed up bubble gum. <laughs> like, who knows if that man can draw, but he's pretty, pretty, pretty creative with uh, <laughs> chewed up bubble gum. You know, and I talked to them about abstract art. And, you know, I said, some of these most famous painters, Jackson Pollock, who splattered paint on the canvas, we don't know if he could draw well or not, mm -hmm. but he's still one of the most famous artists that many people recognize his name. 
So, you know, there's sculpture, there's pottery, there's photography, um, so many different kinds of art that it's not about drawing, you know? And so I just, I tell the kids, as long as you try your best, you know, you're, we're going to get along just fine. You don't have to be the world's greatest at drawing to do well in art. That's, that's, it doesn't equal. So. Yeah. I like that you let meet kids at where they, where their abilities are now, because like for, for me, for example, my middle school art teacher was very hard on us and like barely gave A's and B's, you know, it was just, and it was kind of the point where you're like, now I don't even really want to try because I wasn't that confident in it before. And now it's really hard to meet your approval. And then after right. that, it was like, now I don't really want to try it. So I like that you're really open to like, you know, see where you are, see what you're good at. You don't have to be good in every single portion of art. Right. Well, and I think the, the key that what you're doing is just reframing as to what good is, what's that even mean in the world of art, you know? Exactly. So it comes down so much to your expression. And when you say something is good, then that means that you're not good as a person. And it's hard to, it's hard not to separate that and understand what that, what, what somebody really means when they say that's not good. <laughs> Especially at that And age. not take that as a personal thing. Yeah. Because you just expressed yourself and then they're saying your, your expression is no good. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, yeah. In my experience of working with artists, and in the adult realm, um, it always comes back to a teacher. So Carly, you're very important. Don't squash dreams. Always. <laughs> well, I'm here because of a I'm here because of a special teacher that I had in the seventh grade, and uh, I I hunted her down and I found her about five years ago on Facebook, and we've reconnected, and it's it's been a gift to just be able to tell her, you know, you you were the one that made a difference for me. You know, I was an awkward seventh grader. I was a third child, but my older brother and sister were so much older that I was a, a mama's girl and I would cry and get a stomach ache in elementary school and I would end up in the office and just want to go home. And, and I just, I don't have the greatest memories from elementary. But then when I hit seventh grade, I had Mrs. Haney at Thomas Ewing and I thought she was the most beautiful, the coolest, the sweetest. Uh, and I, I'll never forget. She complimented me on my beautiful cursive one time. She liked my earrings one day. She walked into the cafeteria and looked over at me when I was sitting with my friends and I kind of waved at her and she winked at me. And to this day, like I remember that and I knew that I wanted to be a Mrs. Haney for someone someday. And, uh, and it's been neat that I've been able to, to reconnect now and, and let her know that. So uh, she didn't stay in teaching, um, but she is still working with a school system in Portsmouth. So um, Facebook can be a crazy place, but it also can have some pretty, pretty cool, you know, benefits. So that was one. Hey, Carla, I have a question. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for sharing. Um, you know, art has, is you not only offer those classes to the kids, but you offer something different. You give them an opportunity to actually be around people, which we don't have that you know, that part anymore, which is, which is really fascinating. But do you actually, do you sell any of your art? I mean, you know, when it, whenever, whenever I look for a piece of art, I always look for something that's never going to be in someone else's house. I don't know if anybody else is like this, but I'm kind of, you know, uh, and then I have to kind of ask myself, you know, how far am I going to look for this? And then I set up for something. So, but, um, you know, just thanks for what you do. But if you ever decide to sell, I mean, I'm sure you'll have a website and things like that. But I'll be talking to Rachel to see if that's a possibility or talking to you. So, but thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Who knew I'd be an art agent by the end of today? Fantastic. Anybody else have anything? No, I don't see anybody saying anything. I don't have anything in the chat. Okay, well, I really, really appreciate you coming today, Carla. We really appreciate you being here. And I wanted to let everybody know also, I put your information in the Community Connections newsletter that's gonna go out for February. That's kind of like follow-up from today. So um, if you didn't write down, um, it has your name and number in there and then it has the class schedule. So people can find it there as well. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to to say hi and let you know a little bit about <laughs> my corner of the world. <laughs>